So it's been a few months since we diagnosed this 2011 Toyota Camry with the stalling problem. Uh, really bad rattle under the hood. The exhaust phaser, according to the TSB, has grenaded at 180,000 miles. Uh, I have a replacement phaser. The customer brought the car in for repair. Um, standard motor products. So, according to the TSB, Toyota has an upgraded phaser. However, guess what? It's on back order. And if Toyota has back ordered parts for a 10 year old vehicle, what is the world coming to? The economy is probably going to crash because Toyota usually stocks parts for like 25 year old vehicles, no problems at all. So, next option was an aftermarket uh, unit exhaust phaser. Now it says made in Japan, that's promising, and it's actually a, a Toyota unit. So oftentimes for specialized parts, the aftermarkets, they rebox originals. So that's a win. Now the part number here is a 13070-36011. So it's one of the later part numbers, but it's not the latest one, the one that's on back order. But this should work perfectly fine, at least, you know, for 100,000 miles, whatever. So we're going to install this. It's a five-hour job. We've got to take off the camshaft cover, valve cover. And um, according to the instructions, you don't need to remove the timing chain. You just have to loosen the tensioner and then remove the phaser or the camshaft. Uh, but it's still kind of a lengthy procedure. So we'll do the highlights and hopefully get this car back on the road. All right, a little update, peeling back the onion, wiring harness out of the way, battery air box removed. Uh, next step, I got the belt off and the tensioner. It was a little pain in the butt to get to, three little bolts. And now, I want to remove this cap so we can get to the bolt for the intake camshaft uh, phaser. As the procedure is, there's a timing uh, chain tensioner cover down there, so we don't need to remove the big timing cover, which is nice. We have to work around that. Uh, but we have to remove this bolt so we can, you know, remove this phaser, and then the cam chain will be loose, and then we'll remove the exhaust camshaft. So I don't have a 14 millimeter hex socket. I know that's I have up to 12 millimeter and a 17. So I found a nut that's 14. It'll fit right in here. And the bolt, so I want to weld these nuts to this bolt so I can grab onto it and then get that cap out. So let's uh, weld this thing up. Alright, I got the special tool installed. Seven. Besides the 17, let's see if this thing. Yes, work like a charm. So I'll keep this in the uh, in the toolbox. All right, let's buzz off this cam cover. We're going to leave the solenoids and camshaft sensors in the cover. They're not in the way of anything, so we don't need to disturb them. All right, so I spun the engine over, and we can see exactly what's broken on this exhaust phaser. You see this pin sticking out? That is for the return spring to you know, for the little leg on the return spring to rest against. Well, that leg isn't there anymore. You can see that shiny piece, that's where the spring just snapped off. So this cam couldn't return back to home base. You can see on the brand new one, here's the spring, and this piece right here is rests against this pin. So on the old one, it snapped off right there, so it, it was just flopping around. So we gotta put the new one in, and button this thing back up, should be as good as new. Oh, more carnage. 
Uh, yeah, so this piece is missing. The internals, and there's this chunk just floating around in here. That's pretty nuts. So some people are going to say, oh, now we have to go and take the oil pan off and fish out all the kibbles and bits and stuff, but you know what? We're not going to do that. We're just going to replace the phaser. It'll be fine. So engine is at TDC. You can see the mark right there at the zero. And then the sprockets here, obviously the colored links aren't going to line up. But here's one mark, and here's the second mark on the intake cam. And just, you know, mark some places and count the number of links. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight links between the marks. This mark is aligned with, let's say, this hole, the oil hole there. This mark is aligned with, I put a little scribe mark right there. So now we can take everything apart and we won't have to worry about putting it back together in the right place. Step one is to remove this cover right here and then get that bolt out, get this phaser out, and take the tensioner off down there and then we should have enough slack we'll have to remove all of the camshaft caps they're big caps, they hold both camshafts in place so we have to remove all these take the exhaust camshaft out Take it to the bench and remove this phaser, put the new one on. That's the procedure. All right, let's take off this little pen thing, guys. Keep that all together. And we gotta line up some timing marks, get this to TDC number one. And then the tensioner lives behind that cover down there. I pop that off. We're after this guy. We'll see if there's any visible damage. Alright, so I'm just loosening up this bolt. It's a 17 millimeter. Hold the hex, hold the cam with the crescent wrench. And it wasn't too terribly tight. So that's loose. It's good. Now let's uh, take out that timing chain tensioner. Get more slack. Should be good to go. Alright, so the chain is nice and loose now. Tensioner is out. It looks like this. So after you get it out, you can put a little grenade pin in it. Don't forget about the gasket. And well, I get got to get the intake phaser off. Got the bolt out. So So get the chain off this way, and it should, should be just enough room. Toyota's nice. They say it should have enough room to come out. All right, let's loosen up all of the camp caps. Okay, so we'll gently there we go. Okay. Looks good. This is the big one. Put that right here. Now our camshafts are free. And our prize. Exhaust. Ta da! With the busted 
baser. So I'm going to hold the camshaft right here. Don't grab it by <laughs> the uh, reluctor wheel. Remember what happened to that Jeep? And earthquake to the rescue. There's a broken phaser. That piece is just in there. Let's put the new one on. The pin is still good. Now this new phaser, it has a couple nicks in it. I don't know from what. I did try to clean those up. Might have to do a little more. I should. Okay, perfect. Clip right in. Put a bolt back in. that that pin is co correctly aligned so I'm gonna zap it down and then we'll check the torque spec with a torque wrench okay so we're gonna torque this bolt to 63 foot-pounds Awkward. Okay. Perfect. Pop this camshaft back in. Alright, so we got the camshafts in. You see the timing mark is lined up with the chain where that used to be in eight links. So don't worry about the chain being loose in the middle. We'll figure that out later. So now I want to torque the cam caps down and then we have to tighten the bolt here on the phaser. Okay, and so I only want to torque that once the camshafts are nice, you know, in their home position to avoid breaking or distorting anything. So I'm just gently tightening down the cam caps, and you see the cams are kind of shifting around a little bit. That's normal because they're spring loaded by you know the valves are some of them are not completely open or closed. So just go evenly. And we'll torque these to spec, don't worry. All the big bolts are tight. Um, let me do the little ones. We'll torque those to spec. And we'll get that bolt torqued down. And we can set the timing, put the tensioner back in. All right, so now we can torque the intake camshaft bolt. That was it, 63 foot pounds. Let me get our wrench out of here. Oh, we can use the wrench later to uh, help with timing. Um, yeah, let me go through all the cap bolts. Put the tensioner back in. All right, tensioner's in. It clicked, so this little slack will be taken up once the engine starts up. Everything's spot on the money. There's a timing mark, and there's a timing mark. We're eight links from there to there. Everything should be perfect. Just got to button everything up. And we'll hear this thing run, clear the codes out, make sure it's good to go. She's all back together. Scan it. Fire it up, make sure it runs smoothly and quietly. 
uh, battery is disconnected so everything's green. Let's go. Sounds pretty good. Go to ECM. Make sure we didn't forget to plug anything in. No codes. All right. We'll take it on a test drive. Well, I was going to take it on a test drive. I hear this terrible metallic noise. It seems to go away when I apply the brakes. So I want to check the brakes first before taking it on a test drive. Well, here's the noise. The front pads have no shims installed. Yeah, classic. Okay, we'll note that on the work order. Not here for that. This one is also missing the, uh, the shim. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, drives great. Uh, DVT, I don't see the angles changing yet. Um, maybe once we get cruising, maybe it doesn't report in Toyotas, I don't know, but it says on or off, so, no, can, no check engine light, no noises, so even Toyotas can break down, what about that Scotty Kilmer, have you ever seen a grenaded phaser, I've never seen one in any other vehicle, honestly, so apparently they had a defective batch and the new ones are on back order, so get what you can find. As long as it's OEM, it should last another, whatever, 100,000 miles. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.